everybody, and welcome back to the Republican Rundown. I'm Madison Jessiato Gilbert, RNC National Spokeswoman, and I am pleased to be joined today by our Communications Director, Keith Skipper, and our Director of Strategic Communication, Tommy Pickett. As we get closer and closer to the end of the year, we really can't get enough of these clips of President Joe Biden. Embarrassing moments, gaffes, it was hard to decide on our favorites, but we brought some to you and we're excited to share them today. I'm going to pass it right off to Keith, who's going to dive right in. Sure. Thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, and I have to say, my favorite has kind of been a long running thing throughout his term. Uh, it would definitely have to be Biden versus stairs. We've not seen a Goliath battle like this since the Eagles and Chiefs played in the Super Bowl. I don't even know if we're allowed to say that. We may have just blurred that out. But it is such a massive battle for the president every time he uses it. It's such a massive battle that he's actually started having to use shorter stairs to get into uh, uh, Air Force One. But we have a clip of some of his, his greatest falls, uh, and we'll roll that right here. So as you can see, it's not even just stairs. It's kind of every walks of life. Even the short stairs give him problems. And the thing that, that I find so interesting about this is that if he can't even manage stairs, how could we possibly expect him to be able to manage the country? Are we really surprised considering he can't handle either of those? Yeah, nothing shouts leader of the free world like a guy who can barely walk. Uh, can't ride a bike, can't walk up the stairs, can't really do much of anything. It's really a shame. Uh, when we think about the fact that this is the person that's supposed to be leading our nation and, quite frankly, leading the world. Yeah, and I think the uh, one of the astonishing parts about it, too, is the fact that, like you mentioned, change to the short stairs. I mean, that's the bubble that Joe Biden's in, the amount of work that needs to go in to protect this president from embarrassing the country. They need to literally change the stairs that he's using to get onto an airplane. That's the priority of this White House. That's how much they have to protect him from, from stairs, from questions, you name it. I think that's kind of astonishing that they literally changed how the president gets on the airplane just for Joe Biden. Yeah, 100%. That's why, I mean, that is my favorite clip. It's going to be really, really, really hard to top that. But I'm interested <laughs> to see if you guys can do it. So, Tommy, why don't you give us yours? Well, mine's sort of uh, uh, the challenge Biden has with numbers. I mean, Biden doesn't really have a good grasp of numbers on a normal day. But now he's just taken to making them up as he goes along. And one of the greatest examples of this, I think, is that when it comes to the debt, it's an, on uh, an ongoing theme. We have a, a mashup of that that we're going to play now, too. I cut the national debt by one trillion seven hundred billion dollars. We literally cut the federal debt in half by one point four trillion dollars. One trillion seven hundred billion dollars. One trillion seven hundred billion dollars cut. We cut the debt by one point seven billion in the last two years. Let me say that again. One point seven trillion dollars. I reduced the budget by one point seven billion. We cut the federal debt in half. Fact. In the first two years of my administration, I cut the debt by $1.7 trillion. $1.7 billion. $1.7 trillion. $1.7 trillion. $1.7 trillion. $7 billion. $1.7 trillion. $1.7 billion. $1.7 billion. It's a trillion, a trillion, a trillion dollars. Not billion, trillion dollars. One point seven trillion dollars. Hear me? No one's ever reduced the debt that much. So that was only the tip of the iceberg when it comes to those numbers. I mean, I, there's two things that kind of stick out to me and just shows Biden's ongoing challenge with the facts that is just embarrassing at this point. One is he can't even remember his own lie. He's saying 1.7 billion, 1.7 trillion. Sometimes he says cut in half. Sometimes he says 1.4 billion. And the second part is he hasn't even cut the debt. The debt's not even down. The debt has increased under Joe Biden. So for me, that's sort of an ongoing embarrassment that he has, that he clearly has no idea what he's talking about. And he can't even remember his own lie, which he repeats almost every single speech. And I think one of the other things important to note here is not only is Biden a liar when it comes to numbers or quite frankly, maybe can't count, but it's the Democratic Party as a whole. And you look at some of these videos that have come out over the prior years of commentators and Democratic politicians that their numbers are always wrong. And one of my favorites is one I just shared this week. It was kind of an older clip from a couple years ago, but it's of um, a Democratic commentator talking about 
how much money had been poured into an election, talking about it was like, you know, over 500 million and how every single American could have gotten a million dollars. And they continue to go on to the segment saying, yeah, that's right. And they pull up and they put up a tweet about it um, and no one ever corrects it uh, during the segment on air. So that's uh, always one of my favorite as well. Yeah, I just love how he just is like seems to be clearly throwing out a number to kind of mask his lie. Reminds me a lot of like when my wife asks, like, when's the last time you changed our six month old diaper? And it's like, I've changed it one <laughs> trillion, seven hundred and fifty billion, nine hundred million times this week. Like you just kind of throw it out there and hope that you kind of distract with this crazy number that uh, perhaps people will just not even pay attention to the fact that you're just making things up. Or yeah, keep I mean, throwing numbers out there until one sticks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, the thing is, they don't stick too because he can't remember to repeat it. You know, it's like he, he, he's, he keeps on inventing new numbers, but it, it's not even something that's happening anyway. And it, it's so many different things on inflation, everything else. It's, it's, they, they, he's either not prepped or they prep him with this lie. I mean, there's just so many elements of this, of how he not only says it, but says it again and again and again. It really is just, it's astonishing to me. Um, but th that's, tip of the iceberg again when it comes to these embarrassing moments. Madison, I know that you have one that you thought was worthy of highlighting here as your nominee uh, for uh, one, of these most one of these embarrassing moments that Joe Biden's had. So another compilation we put together is just a few, but there are many more of these clips. Uh, something that really stood out to me this year is Biden versus the air. Take a look at these. America. God bless you all. So I don't know if the president's, uh, you know, being able to see things that we can't, he's in touch with aliens, he knows ghosts, uh, but he seems to continually shake hands with the air, never know how to get off of a stage, wander aimlessly after so many speeches, after so many remarks. Uh, this is one of the most embarrassing things I think that we continue to watch. And it happens on world stages while he's with other world leaders. People across the world laugh at Joe Biden. We all know that. Um, and it's an embarrassment to our country. So this would be my nomination for most embarrassing, uh, you know, string of moments for the president this year. Yeah, I mean, the, the whole, the, the, when he does that so often and every time it's just so concerning to watch. I mean, he looks just so lost and confused. Uh, but you know, this is why I think Democrats more and more and more are turning against him in polling is that they see these kinds of things and they're like, is this guy really who we want uh, as our even our own standard bearer, let alone president of the United States? I think this kind of stuff is what uh, is really concerning and why we hear so many rumors uh, and, and kind of this what I think is probably more like fan fiction that uh, they may replace him with someone like Gavin Newsom, which, by the way, if they did, I would love if it was Gavin Newsom. I know I talk a lot about Gavin Newsom when I'm on, on our programs. Uh, it's because he is such a, a perfect foil for us. But again, this is why Democrats are so concerned is because of clips like that. And I think it's important for, to, to remember that these events are all staged, right? In the sense that every move is supposed to be pre-planned and Biden is prepped on these moves. So his confusion isn't as if he's he's thrown into the middle of nowhere and he has to find his way out of a corn maze or something like that. He literally just has to walk off stage. He literally just has to follow the directions. He has to stand where he's supposed to stand and walk off stage where he's supposed to walk off stage. And like Madison said, it happens all the time, literally all the time. So, uh, you know, at the very best, no one's bothering to tell him where to go. But at this point, it happens so often that that can't be the excuse. And it really shows that uh, what is going on in his mind at this point where he's, he has no idea where he's going, no idea where he's supposed to stand, no idea who he's shaking hands with. I mean, it's so embarrassing. Uh, and, and to Keith's point, I mean, I would also love if Gavin Newsom was the nominee because his record is horrendous. That shows even though Democrats are nervous, they have no one else to run because they either have Joe Biden who doesn't know how to get off the stage and also has terrible policies or Gavin Newsom who leads a state where people can't leave fast enough. 
I don't think it matters whether it's President Biden, it's Vice President Kamala Harris, it's Governor Gavin Newsom, it's former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton. The reality is Republican policies will make people's lives better and the Democratic policies that all of these potential candidates have to offer will simply be more of the same or worse and won't make people's lives better. You look at the amount of people across this country uh, that think their life is better under Joe Biden, and it's a slim number. I don't even think that it's not even close to a quarter at this point, especially when you talk about economic numbers. And so people are fed up with this. And I really think that is the big Republican advantage we have next year, is making sure that we connect with these voters who are sick of not only Biden and his administration, but of Democratic policies across the country, making their communities poorer, making their communities less safe, uh, and just not benefiting their lives. Yeah, and, and to Madison, uh, something else I wanted to mention to that point about these policies and as well is that uh, his policies keep on changing with the wind. I mean, that's really concerning when it comes to Joe Biden, because not only can he take not take direction from his staff, but it seems like he's taking his cues from the far left. So not only is he lost when it comes to getting off stage, he seems really lost to me when it comes to where he stands on these different policies. He contradicts himself constantly. And, and sort of a, a related point to this, uh, when you I don't know if you've ever seen the teleprompter at Biden's speeches, sometimes you see the camera angle where you can see the teleprompter. He has trouble keeping up with the teleprompter. So sometimes Joe Biden just says something off the cuff and that becomes the de facto policy of the United States of America. And then they have to walk it back. It really, it's, it's so embarrassing and it's so concerning that we have a president that, that seems to take his cues from the radical left, is flip-flopping every day and really, like we said, can't get off stage. Yeah, you're not lying about that. Uh, and before we wrap up with all of our nominees, I think Chris and Dennis had one more for us. Do you guys want to queue up that video as well? So the studio team here nominated the um, God Save the Queen Man video. <laughs> uh, we're going to play that right now. All right. God Save the Queen Man. You could see that this video was taken in June, um, and the Queen passed in September of 2022. So, my question or my confusion is: Is he not up to date on like current events? Uh, because it's not like the Queen had recently passed. Yeah, and he did a similar thing, Chris, in uh, earlier this year, or, or sorry, I think it might have been last year. But after a Congresswoman from Indiana passed away, he was in a remarks asking where she is where's jackie where's jackie uh so it's not the first time or the last time he's done something like this keith tommy you guys want to jump in on this one yeah i mean i know he was in charlotte so maybe he was concerned about the queen city in general which i mean i love charlotte my wife's from north carolina i i'm not concerned about uh about charlotte but i think this again kind of goes through kind of a common theme here whether it's Trouble navigating stairs, getting lost, shaking hands with the air, not knowing who uh, is the monarch uh, in England. Uh, this is a president that's just utterly confused uh, and just seems completely lost. Uh, and I think we're seeing the result of, of him kind of being out of it and not totally engaged in his own policies, whether it's the border, whether it's fentanyl, whether it's the, uh, the rise in inflation, the economy, Bidenomics, man. Uh, this president... Uh, is just uh, asleep at the wheel, it seems. Yeah, it's, I think it's also connected to the fact that it just seems to make up expressions all the time as well. I mean, that's the, the best excuse I heard from the White House was that this was just an expression that people say. I mean, I've heard it said in relation to the Queen at the end of events in Great Britain, but I've never heard it just randomly after a presidential speech with absolutely no bearing to what's going on in the speech, obviously after the Queen had passed away. It's, it's also part of a pattern from Joe Biden where he he seems to think that people that held positions in government 10, 20, 30 years ago are still in those positions, whether he says he's a senator or whether he's talking about a senator who's no longer a senator or a governor. He confuses these people all the time. So I think it's a combination of him just making up these expressions where no one knows what he's talking about, forgetting who's holding these offices. Uh, and like Keith said, I think it is part of that pattern of him at the very least not knowing what's going on. And that's the best possible explanation for what's going what, what the reason why he's messing this up. And that's an unacceptable explanation for why he just keeps on blurting these things randomly out. And even the White House has no idea what he's talking about. That's right. That's right. Before we wrap up, uh, I want everybody out there watching to cast your vote in the comments below. Let us know which 
one of these clips that we shared today do you think is the most embarrassing for Biden and his administration in 2023? Uh, and while people are busy doing that, I want everybody on here to vote as well. Obviously, we all brought our own clips, but after seeing what everybody brought to the table, uh, what would you guys say is the worst for Joe Biden? Keith, I'm going to start with you. I don't know. God Save the Queen, man, was pretty fun. I, 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 my, that might be up there. Tommy? Yeah, I, I think I'm, I'm torn now between the, the God Save the Queen and Madison, uh, your nomination of his continual confusion with getting off stairs, because there really just is no excuse for that. Yeah, that's right. Uh, all right, studio team, Chris, Dennis, what are you guys thinking? Um, we're still going to, on our pick, God Save the Queen. All right, so it looks like I won't even have to vote because we have three people voting pretty much for God Save the Queen. So it looks like that's our RNC winner for this year. I'm sure we'll unfortunately have more clips like this before the end of the year. And as we go into 2024, we'll see more. So this may be something we want to bring back for another segment. Uh, but we appreciate you guys voting. We'll continue to look through what you guys have to say in the comments. Uh, and maybe we'll talk a little bit more about this as we start off next week. But thanks again for tuning in to the Republican Rundown. Keith, Tommy, Chris, Dennis, thank you guys. And we'll be back next week with another RNC Republican Rundown.